About two weeks ago, Tesla was presenting at the Committee of Infrastructure in the Parliament of Brandenburg. Brandenburg is the state Tesla is building the Gigafactory Berlin in. So for everybody who doesn't know, the Gigafactory Berlin is actually not really in Berlin, but very close. So the parliament in Brandenburg is responsible for all the approvals, the regulation, and you name it. Therefore, they've been asking Tesla since a long time to present their project because it's of high importance for that state. Finally, end of August, Tesla decided to do that presentation and Alexander Riederer, who works for Tesla now about two years and is located in Amsterdam, was going to the parliament and hold a 20 minutes presentation that is really revealing, interesting to say the least. This presentation has gone almost unnoticed, so that is content you don't find anywhere else, which is exactly the mission of my channel. This is the Speaker of the Parliament, Mr. Münchke, and you have all fractions in the room from all parties listening. Alexander made some nice introduction words and then started. And I'm going to, to read to you in English what he said. The topic infrastructure is for Tesla of core importance. We are building the most advanced serial production facility for BEVs in the world in Brandenburg. But even the most advanced factory will only be successful if the employees can get to the factory quickly and comfortably and the belts can run continuously because the just-in-time delivery arrives exactly when it should. Therefore, you can be assured that for us the topic of infrastructure has the same top priority as for you. And the good thing is that Grünheider and the surrounding areas have the absolute prerequisites that a sustainable and powerful infrastructure can be created. And Tesla has always taken a very clear position. We want to be a part of the solution. Before I start, I would like to say a few words about Tesla's mission simply because I believe it is important to understand what drives us. Everybody is here for different reasons, but I think we all agree on one thing. We will only be able to minimize the negative effects of climate change if we act now. And that has been our vision from the beginning to help accelerate the energy and transportation transformation. And that's why my colleagues and I come to work every day and work hard to make the vision you see here a reality. And why do I see us on a good path? One of the success factors for this mission is that you have the freedom to travel emission free to wherever you want to go. And that's why we launched our Model S in 2012 with a range of 420 km, more than 420 km, and we have been working continuously to improve the range, to make it more efficient and to increase the range so that we now have a range of 600 km over 640 km, which is an increase of more than 50% compared to 2012. I think this shows very well our innovative drive for efficiency and energy savings. And just as we offer this in our products, we also offer this in our construction of the Gigafactory, where we are striving to introduce continuous improvements. And I think we have proven this is a past. Closely related to this is the development of a charging infrastructure. We had the classic chicken and egg problem. Without a charging infrastructure, no BEVs, and without BEVs, no charging infrastructure. We broke through this early on by building our own supercharger network. Already today, our customers have 2,000 charging stations with more than 
18,000 fast charging stalls at their disposal. And I believe this is a very important factor to make emission-free driving and especially long-distance driving suitable for everyday use. We are not stopping here, but are consistently expanding this network. When you all imagine what kind of car you were driving in 2012, if it's not the same today, imagine what it was like back then, for example, to enter where you want to go in the navigation system. And what you see here on the wall now is a Model S from 2012, only that it has the latest software. Our cars get regular software updates so that they get better in their existing functions, but also getting new functions. Therefore, the car you see here is just like your car that has gotten older with the important difference that it has gotten much better in the meantime. Therefore, I hope very much that when I give a presentation here again in eight years, that you all have taken this to heart and bought a Tesla. But let's get to the reason why we are all here, the Gigafactory. It will be the most advanced serial production factory in the world that we are building here in Brandenburg. We have a capacity of 500,000 vehicles for Model Y production. This is a start. For these 500,000 vehicles, we will need up to 12 thousand employees and I believe that these are the parameters that will have a major impact on how the infrastructure is developed. If all of that did look like a sales presentation to you then because it was. Alexander was presenting Tesla to politicians who certainly or probably never have been in a Tesla and all what they know about the company they have from the press and the media and everybody who's familiar with Tesla knows that you know the media and the press is usually not talking nicely about the company so he's making a sales presentation in order to give them an understanding what Tesla is about and what the mission is and what they have achieved and what differentiates the vehicles from anybody else. And I think he's doing a really fine job with that. Interestingly is what he doesn't tell us. He doesn't talk about what is going to happen after the Model Y because the Model 3 is definitely going to be, you know, produced, manufactured, maybe even designed partly one day in Europe. And Elon has talked about that last week when he was in Germany. There are consistently rumors about a compact car that would, that would suit very well the narrow roads in Europe as well, which is, I believe, another nice option for a vehicle to be developed for Europe. Alexander doesn't talk about that. He talked about 500,000 Model Ys to be produced every year and 12,000 employees that need to be hired and he outlines how important these employees are in the next section. The factory itself will use world-leading production technology and methods. Just to mention three, we will have a state-of-the-art casting, we will have a highly efficient body shop and a next generation paint shop that will enable unprecedented color complexity and depth in production vehicles. But this is just the start. We will in the future design, develop and produce vehicles for the world market in Grünheide, also due to the engineering know-how in Brandenburg, Germany and Europe. Did you catch that? Did you hear it? It was the second time that he said, this is just the start. So Tesla has big, big plans for the Gigafactory Berlin and they, you know, just making first baby steps with his 500k vehicles as well as with what kind of models are produced there. That's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is 
he is making clear how critical and important employees are having the right expertise having people with you know the right attitude with the right motivation is for tesla much more critical and important than anybody else why did we choose Grünheide? We cited 100, more than 100 locations at that time in Europe. And one of the most important reasons, and therefore we are all here today, was the good connection to road and rail. The good starting position that already existed here. Two important points here to highlight. Number one is they've been searching indeed 100 i mean visiting and citing 100 locations can you imagine that you get a job to look at 100 locations for the perfect place to build the gigafactory in europe not an easy task i remember about three locations they went to in germany and i also know that a few have been you know ruled out because it leaked through but 100 locations, wow, that's really impressive. Number two, and this is one this is one of the key criteria why they decided for Berlin and very important to understand. They've been deciding for logistics reasons for Gigafactory Berlin because it's easy to get to and get away from by train and by road. Whoever is, um, you know, following me on Twitter knows that I talked from the beginning on that logistics will be a key component of the decision for the Gigafactory and here we have it, this is the proof. The talent pool in Brandenburg, Germany and Europe coupled with the location in the Berlin metropolitan area is also a very important factor, an essential topic for Tesla. We need the best people at all levels. This is the only way to continue to build the best cars. The talent pool is extremely critical and important for Tesla because they want to build the best cars in the world and they want to continue to do that. Without people, you will never be able to do that. So a lot of people are thinking Elon is Tesla, which is partly true. But at the end of the day, you have a ton of talent around him that makes everything possible that is happening today. And what Elam would like to achieve in Europe and in Germany is the same. So hiring the best people is only possible at a place where you have the best talent pool. And being German, being an engineer, um, apologies for that, you have a lot of talent in Germany simply because people have been working for automotive companies since decades. And they are pretty sick about you know, what's happening with Daimler, with BMW and with Volkswagen, with Porsche, and they're really looking for an opportunity. So it was the right step to go into the backyard of the main competitors in the world. Yes, we have a Toyota and we have a Nissan and we have other large corporations, but let's face it, um, the main market, you know, superior premium vehicles like BMW, Mercedes, and you name it, they are coming out of Germany and they are not coming out of Asia. So it makes a lot of sense for Tesla to invest here in Germany. And I understand the motivation. And it's clearly been a very important decision criteria, maybe number one, to locate in an area where you find enough talent. And another further important factor is Germany's and Brandenburg's position in Europe, what concerns the conversion of climate goals. Brandenburg's position in Germany as pioneer in conversion of the climate goals. When politicians have been asked why Tesla decided for Brandenburg, one of the main criteria and reasons they've been naming was because we have enough renewable energy available, mainly from wind in Brandenburg. Um, so this is another criteria Tesla was really looking at and I believe it's been indeed critical and important. A lot of people have been saying, you know, in Germany everybody is done by coal, which is absolutely not the case and not true. In fact, you can select what kind of energy you want to consume. While in other countries you just depend on the mix, whatever you get. Here in Germany you have the option 
to the side. And this is also valid for the charging infrastructure. Personally, I'm only using 100% renewable energy if I can. And I know that the majority, 80, 90% plus from the energy in the superchargers is green energy as well. Actually, the main message that we all have to take with us out of this room is that, especially in connection with infrastructure planning, the factory is coming and it is coming quickly. Another important point for Tesla is that we are striving to localize our supply chain. That does not only have the positive effect for Brandenburg that more jobs are created and more innovation is coming, but in particular with regards to infrastructure that we contribute to an ease. And then another important aspect that everybody at Tesla works very hard for is to bring a long distance semi on the European market who will not only revolutionize the transportation business, but he will also contribute to supply the factory sustainably. Localizing the supply chain is a critical point and I believe another criteria for the selection of the Gigafactory near Berlin. Simply because you have a huge industry, a supply industry in Germany that is a century old and that is innovative and that is looking for new business. Right now they are pretty much under pressure. We have bankruptcies and we have you know, a lot of companies are suffering from the recession the automotive industry is in before the COVID crisis did hit. So localizing has a huge positive impact for production. I remember very well when Elon talked about batteries that are turning about four times around the globe before they are used in whatever product. And that was one reason why he decided he wants to produce the batteries where they are going to assemble with the vehicles. And exactly that is going to happen in Grünheide. Another interesting aspect here is that Alexander mentions the SEMI as a sustainable vehicle for transportation. And he also made the case, and I'm not translating all of that for a second um, exit for from the autobahn to the factory as well as a second train station for the workers going back and forth to the factory. He also talked about living in Amsterdam and experiencing the huge positive impact it has to go with a bicycle to work and that they would encourage thinking about you know, developing and building bicycle lanes around the factory, which I believe is a fantastic idea and makes a ton of sense. So all in all, he was trying to convince politicians to think a little bit out of the box versus that what they've been doing in the past. When we said in November that we go to Germany, that we go to Brandenburg, we go to Grünheide, Many people have said you will never in your life in 2020 somehow start to build. The picture showed you impressively we are in the middle of it and that must be our common goal that we next year start the factory and that people say exactly the same about the infrastructure planning. And even if I go a step further, we will not only say that we are full in building, we can say that we have completed some measures. So some of you may now be interested what the reaction in the room was because I put everything on mute so you didn't get the interaction in the room and I can say it was pretty muted. Everybody was silent, there's been nobody talking really. I mean it's politicians in Germany, it's not like in the UK where everything throw everything in the, in the conversation regardless who is talking. In Germany, everybody is waiting until someone finished his talk and then questions are asked. And, you know, there's been some people asking questions after the presentation from Alexander, but it was agreed up front that there is no Q&A. 
And the reason for that is simple. Um, there is um, a couple of um, approvals ongoing with the authorities right now. So before final decisions has been made from the regulatory bodies, Tesla can't even talk really freely about the measures and what they really are doing and what they are planning to do. And the confirmation and the approvals are coming soon. They are still pending. And there's also an open hearing on September the 22nd um, in Grünheide, where about 400 objections, objections are going to be discussed. And you may frown now or fall from your chair, but 400 objections is not a lot because every citizen can say, hey, I have an objection because I don't like noise and I don't want that the factory makes any noise. I'm living in the neighborhood. That's an objection. It's going to be filed and Tesla needs somehow to answer that. And most of the objections are going to be grouped and answered all together. So there is no risk on that side. But it should be said in the parliament, um, there has been some people, you know, standing up and saying a little bit from what they've heard. And as expected, the, you know, the left wing and the right wing in the parliament, they've been not happy because they are usually never happy and they had their thoughts and ideas about it. But the ruling parties, which are more in the middle, um, like SPD, CDU and others like the Greens even, they've been all supporting um, positively um, the project. And um, there's been also someone from the government there who made some strong statements in support of Giga Berlin. So all in all, I believe this was really a successful presentation. I want to thank Tesla for having done that because here it comes. Nobody else is doing it. BASF and other large corporations who are building right now in Brandenburg, nobody's asking them to present their project in the parliament. But of course, they've been asking a long time for Tesla. Tesla didn't react really because it was such an unusual request. And finally, they did it. And I think we should be grateful that they, you know, try to get every party involved who has questions. And they even invited all politicians at a later stage to, you know, discuss in depth in certain committees all the questions and objections and the thoughts and ideas. So Tesla is doing a great job really trying to bring everybody together and coming to a good consensus. So that's it. That was my video about the presentation at the Brandenburg Parliament. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and, you know, follow me on Twitter and most important, become a patron.